It appears that the 50s and, and 60s were a, a ripe kind of climate for the development of the concepts of child life or emotional aspects of care of hospitalized children. Very much so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in preparing for these interviews, I looked through some of my old uh, files, and I'm not very well organized in all that. Mm -hmm. But I found one program here, which we had started in April 58. That means three years after yeah. the program yeah. really came into, uh, which was called Child Life and Education for Hospitalized Children. And this was at the county hospital, or at city the, hospital. At the city hospital still, Metro yes. Now. Yes. Okay. No, it was already county hospital. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just Name see change. on the program, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, and there we got some help from Cincinnati. Cincinnati under child psychiatry, oh. as well as Tuft under child psychiatry, uh -huh. had programs. And I we see. got the head of child psychiatry to be I with see. us, and the rest were our own yes, yeah. people. So now, people were thinking along these lines oh, elsewhere, definite, too. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. There is no question the 50s yeah. uh, were a place where, the, where these thoughts started. Or Mary Brooks from Philadelphia, who had started there also, mm -hmm. it came over to that meeting in 58. Is that right? Because we had made contacts with each other before mm -hmm. um, at some of the also psychiatric meetings. And so I let her know that we yeah. had this meeting here. Yes. I had um, contact also with a project on, on, in New York in child psychiatry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the person who worked on it and her advisor, who was somebody similar to Dr. Wagner for yes. me, would come. They came in 56 even to see what we did with oh, these little children yes, because yeah. she was working only with yeah. very young ones there. So somehow uh, we, the knowledge spread. And I think it spread because uh, Dr. Robbins had sort of a godfather mm -hmm. feeling about it, and he would tell in a joking way and say, we have something you don't have yeah. with your fancy buildings. Yeah. We have something here and there. And then some of these people came and, and uh, asked me to come and tell them yes. what we were doing here. Well, you wrote your first book, Working with Children in Hospitals, and that was published, what, in 1961? Yes. And that also was something that Dr. Robbins was very yes. proud of and he, used. He wrote, wrote the preface, yes. yeah. and so he... From then on, well, actually, that must have been even a little earlier. Uh huh. When was that? No, 62. That was no, that was about the same time. I just found that also completely forgotten about it. That was a scientific meeting, um, sponsored by Cleveland Metropolitan General Hospital, where all sorts of of medical problems were discussed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was included to present preparing children for operations. Mm -hmm. You know, but this inclusion, I think, facilitated yes. the acceptance yes. of the program here and made it easier. There were other uh, events, too. Robertson in England, is that right, did yes. films on, on reaction to separation by children? And very impressive yes, films. Yeah. And Bowlby's book, which That's came right. out very shortly yes. after the war. Yeah. You know, the war experience had really played a great role in giving an impetus mm -hmm. to all the things that mattered here. That's right. Separation of families yes. um, that came through yes. through these early beginnings. Then uh, Prue the, was another yeah, writer. Is that's that, right. Yes. Yes. Um, was it fifty? Two or three? Mm -hmm. It was fairly early. I'm sorry, I don't. But anyhow, I think it was before. Dr. Robbins came to Cleveland, which was 53, because they were at the same time at Boston Children's. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it ne that didn't get off the ground. It made a beautiful study, mm -hmm. a study which is still quoted, but it didn't promote a program. Not, not yet, anyway. Yes. No. The study was perfect. Yes. But it, at that time, uh, the antagonism of, of uh, probably both administration and pediatricians mm -hmm who were geared to the scientific, under quotes, yes. look at things and yeah. uh, were not quite open to yes. the others. Uh, Metropolitan General Hospital
played really a, a role in giving child life a strong footing, though, by including you in conferences and also had some conferences that were, were focused on, on children. Um, I think preparing, you spoke at the scientific one on preparing children for an operation. Uh, there was one in 1965 on the mother and child bond. Yes. Um, again, where, we, were, where we had Bowlby even, oh. not Bowlby, um, Robertson. I Robertson see. brought oh, some I of didn't. No, we had really, we had some amazing luck in attracting mm -hmm. people who, who were in the limelight at that time. Yes. And that's why it felt a little funny. And that brings us to the beginning of organ, organized that's child right. life. In, in when, 1965. In 65, yes. When I got an invitation to Boston mm -hmm. to uh, get together with others who work in children's recreation. Mm -hmm. Now, I can be pretty snooty if it comes to terms, and I thought, well, recreation. Sick children don't need recreation, they need something else. That's but right. I, I did go anyway. You yes, know. Yes. And there was a group of 25 very engaged people hmm. in that field. The invitations had gone to people on the East Coast, mm -hmm. which in a way was considered the intellectual life yes. of the country. And uh, I probably was included because the book was out and Dr. Robbins had come from there. And otherwise, there may, other reasons too. <laughs> otherwise, he may not have thought of as far west as Cleveland. Well, well anyhow, I was there. And there came this strong uh, enthusiasm about not letting it go at this one meeting, but mm -hmm. trying to get other meetings going mm -hmm. and f maybe form an organization. Mm -hmm. And there were five of us who then a year later when the meeting was the invitation came from Johns Hopkins and that was a funny interlude uh, Boston Children's and Johns Hopkins vied for the privilege of being the most advanced in in that field mm -hmm. and it didn't really help the movement very much because the difficulty arose should that be a professional organization of child life workers mm -hmm. Or should that in, uh, have a broader umbrella and include other mm -hmm. people concerned with the hospitalized child? And finally, at the end of the meeting in Baltimore, the organization got uh, started and would include mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. I think with the provider that they, unless you worked actively in child life, you would not be a voting member. I see, yes. On the other hand, we tried, I was the chairman of the first um, nominated, nominated yes. committee, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. because I did not want to be nominated, there was <laughs> this fight between these two uh, outstanding institutions, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't want to be put yeah. in the midst of it. Yeah. But um, I put two men, one from each institution, who were not child life workers. Yes. Um, on the board. I see. And one was Dr. Brazelton, who has kept his loyalty. Certainly has. Of, until from then on. Certainly. So that we try to, to, to have the other professions like nursing, social work, child psychiatry, or, or uh, pediatrics, yes. always represented yes. on the board. Later on, psychology mm -hmm. came in. But child psychiatry has uh, offered many most valuable participants mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the board. When was it officially called the Association for the Care of Children's Health? I hope I'm correct that the, that the name, and, uh, well, uh, first I mean, it was called the Association for the Care, for care of Children in Hospitals. In hospitals, that's right. Which yes. really fitted it. Yes. Then outpatient departments took a major uh -huh, role. Mm -hmm. Then uh, reaching out into the community of preparing mm -hmm. children before they came, all that. Yes. Um, so the, the name, the first name, was given when things were constituted in Baltimore. In Baltimore. What are your dreams for the future in, in health care of children, Rashi? I had the chance to work with medical students all mm -hmm. along, mm -hmm. and my dream would be that every medical student should get at least a month where he's free of making medical decisions before he gets a clerkship. Yes and be on, on a division to play with children, to observe mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. to be shown around to different places. Um, let's say a school for the blind, mm 
mm-hmm. uh, all these things yeah. which a larger community yeah. has to offer. So they would know what children are like. Yes. And then they can get into yes. what children's illnesses are like. As a kind of final ending to a, a very fascinating history to both you, or both you and, and child life, would you tell us a little bit about the story of one of your patients that you had at, at Cleveland Metropolitan General Hospital who is now an adult, and a very special <laughs> you story. You see, this is one of the shortcomings of working with sick children, that you have them and then they disappear. Well, this youngster who had homophilia reappeared, and reappeared when, I, when he talked to me in the medical library, and a very young man, I read there, a very young man came and said, aren't you Mrs. Plank? And then he reintroduced yes. himself, and we found out we had known each other very well for 12 years. Mm-hmm. And um, when he was 10, and he also mentioned he wanted to go to medical school. Now, he was somebody who needed a scholarship and who, well, I wasn't quite sure that his health was, would hold up. So I sent the story he had written when he was 10 years old and, and hospitalized. Part, part of it I want to read you now as the end to the dean of the medical school who happened to become Dr. Robbins, who <laughs> was my former chief. Mm-hmm. Um, so he would know what this boy thought, and that's what he writes. Now Most, he's 10 when he's writing this story, yes. while you and he yes. were together at Metropolitan. Yes. Right. Most likely, I have a lot more hospital visits ahead of me, but if they discover a cure soon enough, I might just have a few more hospital visits ahead of me. When I grow up, if I get there, I plan to discover a cure for hemophilia if somebody doesn't beat me to it. My other goal in life is to invent an anti-gravity belt <laughs> or a serum that you can drink to have that power. A lot of people think that this is a silly idea, but I really mean it. People in 1900 laughed at the Wright brothers, and in the future the people of 2000 will laugh at me, but I really mean it. Somehow the circle got closed that from being a very time-limited person in a hospital, Mm -hmm. one somehow can follow somebody's development and he, he wrote after his pediatric um, clerkship to me that he really didn't want to become a pediatrician. It, it's much better to be in the playroom. Uh-huh.